With the Gamecocks landing, Nicholas Harbor, the 2023 recruiting cycle has officially come to a close. So what kind of players are the Gamecocks getting from this recruiting class? You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, your show for the latest headlines and potential storylines on South Carolina Gamecock athletics. I'm Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast and also the lead staff writer for Gamecocks Digest over on SI.com. Thank you for making Locked On Gamecocks your first listen here today. We are free and available on YouTube and also wherever you get your podcasts daily. Before we get into this Thursday edition of Locked On Gamecocks, I want to let y'all know that today's show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Nicholas Harper committed to Shane Beamer, his coaching staff, and the South Carolina Gamecocks football program yesterday afternoon. Obviously, it was an absolute whirlwind of the last 48 hours leading into the announcement. If you want my initial reaction to Nicholas Harper's commitment to the Gamecocks, check out all the content that we've got out here on YouTube from Wednesday. I can promise you, you certainly are not going to regret it. I go in-depth on what it means for South Carolina and also what kind of player they are getting in Nicholas Harper. But for today's show, I kind of wanted to put a bow on the 2023 recruiting class as a whole for South Carolina as we're going to dole out some class superlatives for these commitments. And we've got six different ones that we're going to go over on today's edition of Locked on Gamecocks. So let's start off with probably the best superlative, which is the crown jewel of the 2023 recruiting class. And let's be honest, this one's not a difficult one. It's Nicholas Harbor. And obviously, there's multiple reasons why Nicholas Harbor could be classified as the crown jewel for the Gamecocks here in this cycle. But the way that I really view this commitment is Nicholas Harper is going to now open some new doors for Shane Beamer, his coaching staff, and this recruiting staff on more of a national stage. I've talked about this before. South Carolina has got their sort of defined regions at the current moment that they recruit. They recruit the state. They recruit the southeast, the bordering states. They recruit the DMV, Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. They recruit some smaller northeastern states, such as Connecticut, maybe New Hampshire, Delaware. They recruit Texas. With Nicholas Harper, a guy of his stature, committing to the South Carolina Gamecocks. Shane Beer and this staff now are going to be able to take that commitment and walk into the doors of places maybe like an Oklahoma. Maybe they can go out to Arizona. Maybe they can actually go out to California a little bit. They can go into some other places that they haven't really been going to up to this point in the Shane Beamer era. And they can put that commitment on the table and say, listen, I know that you probably haven't heard very much about us, but I promise you, if you give us your time, we are going to make sure that it is very difficult for you to turn down coming to Columbia to play for the South Carolina Gamecocks at the end of the process. Nicholas Harbor's commitment continues the momentum that the Gamecocks have had since late November when it comes to the football field and then, of course, getting off the field in terms of recruitment and the guys that this coaching staff continues to bring in. And the other thing is this. This was an old-fashioned knockout prize fight in terms of signing day in college football recruiting. The Gamecocks had to fend off teams like the Michigan Wolverines, the Miami Hurricanes, the Home State Maryland Terrapins, and the Oregon Ducks, who of course made a massive push at the very last moment here. This was in essence a big boy recruiting battle, and the Gamecocks proved that they can win big boy recruiting battles with Nicholas Harbor. So basically speaking, Nicholas Harper, look, we all know how good of an athlete he is. We know that he has the chance to be an Olympian one day when it comes to track and field. He could be a guy that goes on and plays, you know, 10 plus years in the NFL if he really puts his mind to it probably in terms of playing tight end and wide receiver for this football team. But the perception changing here is, in my opinion, the biggest aspect for why Nicholas Harper is the crown jewel 
for South Carolina's 2023 recruiting class. Now let's move on to the next superlative for this class, which I term to be the certified dog superlative. And this one is going to go to Grayson Pup Howard, the linebacker commit the Gamecocks got out of Jacksonville, Florida, that is already enrolled early and is on campus here at South Carolina. Pup Howard is going to be the pure definition of team captain for the South Carolina Gamecocks from the time that he has stepped foot on campus all the way to the time that he eventually leaves Columbia. This is a guy that cares deeply about this team, about this program, about this school. He is the prospect that told Shane Beamer at one point in a conversation over the phone that they should want people that will die for this program. Now, again, that might sound a little bit extreme, but that just lends you just an iota of an idea as to how much Grayson Howard really and truthfully has bought in to Shane Beamer and this program's vision for the very near future. He has recruited his butt off in terms of going after other prospects from the 2023 class and also guys from 2024, tweeting at them, probably texting them and calling them multiple times throughout months and months that us fans don't know about. He is a guy that is almost like the coaching staff in the sense that he really cares about relationships. That's something that you see in a team captain, in a dog that is on your squad. He comes from a military background. So you know that in terms of sacrifice for the greater good of the program and leadership, that Grayson Howard, there's not going to be any issues there. He is going to be the guy that is going to probably hold everyone else accountable that is around him. He's not going to be afraid to probably call guys out and make sure that essentially these guys elevate their play. Championship teams, teams that want to compete, they need guys like that. Grayson Howard is going to offer that. And he plays downhill. He plays fast. He can handle playing in coverage. He can go sideline to sideline. He is a solid all-around linebacker. Maybe more of a traditional linebacker with how he mainly plays. But this is a guy that can do a little bit of everything from the second level. And South Carolina has kind of been missing that at the linebacker position for a couple of years now. Grayson Pup Howard coming here as an early enrollee. Don't be surprised if this guy is competing for potentially a starting job in August fall camp. Now, those are, of course, the first couple of superlatives. But in terms of maybe some really good athletes that the Gamecocks are getting in this class, obviously they got Nicholas Harbour, but we're not going to have Nicholas Harbour listed for multiple superlatives. Who are some other guys that, in terms of their explosiveness and athleticism, could really wow fans once they really start to play here at South Carolina. We're going to dive into those players in just a couple moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. The Super Bowl is here. We are really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On in FanDuel because they are the number one sports book in America because they have a ton of great features that make betting on sports both fun and easy. With all your favorite bets, from the money line to point spreads to player props, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose. Andrew, did you just tell me I could put down a $5 bet and get $150 back no matter what? Yes, I did. Who doesn't want that kind of deal? You can get that today at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back to this Thursday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day. Locked On is at the Senior Bowl. Get inside analysis from the hosts that cover the NFL's next generation in college and find out which NFL draft boards these players will be climbing all in one location. Subscribe to Locked On NFL Draft for nightly live shows from the Senior Bowl on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. Quick side note, good luck to Darius Rush and Zach Pickens. I've heard a ton of great stuff about Darius Rush and how well he is performing so far down there in Mobile, Alabama. So congrats to those guys. They more than deserve it for all of the things that they have done for South Carolina's football program. 
All right, let's get back to class superlatives now for the 2023 recruiting class, with the next one being the most explosive. And again, we're not going to use Nicholas Harbour here because that'd be a little bit too easy. We've already used him for the crown jewel superlative. So for this one, I'm going to go with Xavier McLeod because here's the thing. In terms of being an interior defensive lineman, what's the stereotypical image that you have? You think of a guy that is obviously very big, someone that is probably going to just maybe eat up some space, have a ton of size, and, you know, might have some really cool flashy moments at certain points in rush defense, but maybe for the most part, they're just, they're not going to do a whole lot. They're sort of going to sacrifice their production for the sake of other players like edge rushers and linebackers to go and make plays. And in a sense, that is still sort of what is expected out of these kind of players. Xavier McLeod is not your average interior defensive lineman. For a guy that is 300 plus pounds, this kid has got unfathomable, explosive quick twitch off the line of scrimmage when the ball is snapped. This is a guy that fires off the ball unlike anything that I have ever seen, really, with interior defensive line commitments that South Carolina has gotten in years past. He has got a high floor overall as a college football player before he even gets to technique because of the God-given athleticism that he does have, the explosiveness specifically. And here's the thing. You want to know just how much other programs wanted this kid? The Georgia Bulldogs, who, by the way, of course, as everyone probably knows, they've won two straight national championships. Uh, Kirby Smart took a couple of helicopter rides over to Camden High School in the past year or so because he wanted Xavier McLeod really, really badly. And the thing is, in years past, Kirby Smart has been able to snag one of the top players in this state when he has wanted them badly enough. Make no mistake, Xavier was the latest prospect for him. But the Gamecocks fended off Georgia, despite what they could offer. So, Shane and the staff did a really good job here getting Xavier McLeod. Again, very explosive athlete. I think that this is a kid that, you know, he might not play as much immediately. Because the thing is, the interior defensive line group is one of the deepest position groups on the entire football team heading into 2023. Literally go three deep at both spots. I think that Xavier McLeod, though, has first-team All-SEC potential. I also think he could be a future day one NFL draft pick. I think he could be a future first-round pick. Uh, this kid's got something special about him. There's no question about that. And it all starts with his explosiveness that you rarely see with kids his size playing at the position he plays. Now, in terms of the most athletic prospect that the Gamecocks have as a part of this 2023 recruiting class. Again, not going with Harper would be too easy. Let's go with Fakari Swain, a guy that was a two-way player down there in Carrollton, Georgia. This is a guy that has high potential, both at wide receiver and the defensive back position. He is somebody that bends really well, runs really well, sees the ball really well, and has fantastic ball skills. There's not really any area in Vakari Swain's game that you look at and you say, you know, I think he has a little bit of work to do in this regard. No, there's not There's not any particular area for Vakari Swain. This is a guy that did not maybe have the greatest offer list compared to some of these other players, but it's quite clear based on where he's ranked now. He's ranked by most recruiting service websites as a top 250 prospect in the country. South Carolina got a steal here. They got an absolute steal you have got to credit Shane Beamer and this staff for getting in on Vakari Swain when they did. Think about this. Vakari Swain has so much potential, especially as a defensive back at the next level here in the SEC, that Deion Sanders, prime time, got to Colorado, and one of the first prospects he really tried to push for in the early National Signing Day period, despite the short amount of time he had, was Vakari Swain. He managed to get him to visit. And I remember, and I myself was wondering, you know, oh boy, are we getting ready to see Vakari Swain pull a last-minute flip to Deion Sanders? Because with Deion, look, he's done this before to his own alma mater, so you never know what's going to maybe happen in those circumstances. But the Gamecocks managed to fend off prime time and the Colorado Buffaloes for Vakari Swain's signature. Vakari Swain, in my opinion, is the best player in this class that is not getting talked about enough. There's plenty of other good players in this class, like Marquis Anderson, like a Nicholas Harper, Xavier McLeod, Desmond Umeo Zulu, some other guys as well. 
And I think that that just goes to tell you how deep this class is. I think that goes to tell you how many players that Shane Beamer and this staff have gotten in this class that could legitimately be, you know, day one starters or in the two deep and pushing the starters for that starting job in year one. This 2023 class, I'm telling y'all, there's something special about it. And for Vicari Swain to be the most athletic, potentially, out of almost all of these players outside maybe Nicholas Harbor, and he's maybe one of the least talked about commits in this class, I think it just tells you just how good it is. All right, now let's get into the final two superlatives for South Carolina's 2023 recruiting class. With the second to last one being the most underrated prospect. Now, I know the way I just talked about Vakari Swain, you might be thinking, you know, maybe he would be the most underrated, but no, I'm not going to put him in this category. I think this one, honestly, is pretty cut and dry. I think Elijah Caldwell is the most underrated prospect in the 2023 recruiting class. This is a guy that is a clear case of someone that maybe wasn't a late bloomer, but is someone that suffers from the modern era now of college football recruiting. Shane Beaver talked about this at his press conference on Wednesday afternoon. You know, there's a lot of earlier stages now that takes place when it comes to recruiting in major college football. And in terms of earlier stages, it basically just means that guys are taking visits now earlier than ever before. Guys are committing earlier than ever before. You know, spots are loading up in classes much earlier than it used to. And because of that, players like Elijah Caldwell, who may be they're not considered to be the most talented at their position, but they're also someone that has shown potential to be a Power 5 player that have been productive at their high school, which he was his junior season. They can fall through the cracks, as Shane Beamer said. And I think that that was a perfect way to explain this entire situation because here's the thing. Elijah Caldwell, for a good while, he was committed to West Virginia, and it seems like he was going to go play for the Mountaineers. And now, of course, Neil Brown, everything that's going on up there, um, Things aren't going so great on those old country roads up there in West Virginia. So Elijah Caldwell, I think because of that, and also seeing kind of what had happened with South Carolina, where there was multiple receiver prospects that either they maybe just didn't like enough or guys that they just flat out lost out on. He held off on signing back in December. And then eventually South Carolina offered him on January the 6th of this year. And... Elijah Caldwell, of course, was thrilled about this. And from that moment on, he was pretty much South Carolina's to lose. What makes him underrated, though? Elijah Caldwell, he is a threat both in the short and deep part of the passing game. As a downfield receiving threat, he's a guy that has great body dexterity. He can contort his body, adjust to the football, has great hand-eye coordination. He has good enough speed to where he can get a couple steps on his matchup. In the quick passing game, he's got really good acceleration. He's got good short field ball carrier vision. Can be a real dangerous threat on tunnel screens, for example. He's also someone that possesses really good awareness when it comes to knowing where he is relative to the sideline. So in terms of routes outside the numbers, again, like hitch routes, out routes, comeback routes, this guy is tailor-made for those kind of routes. When you look at Elijah Caldwell, in terms of how he can affect each part of the field in terms of the passing game, Elijah Caldwell is Pretty much the complete package, just about, in terms of what he can bring to the field. He's also got good size. He's about six foot, six foot one, 190 pounds. He's already built like an SEC wide receiver to a certain extent. So he can probably be a big help in the running game as well as a blocker. So Elijah Caldwell, in my opinion, he's not getting talked about anywhere near enough. And again, he doesn't have four stars next to his name. So you can see how this would have played out this way. And he was also late addition, which added to that. But Look out for Elijah Caldwell. Do not be surprised if this kid makes some noise. And if anything, it would not surprise me if when it comes to maybe that second group of wide receivers in the fall, if you see Elijah Caldwell work his way into the fold at the wide receiver position. Now, the last class superlative here that I decided to create was most violent. Basically, who was a guy that makes his presence felt the most on the football field that South Carolina has got in this recruiting class? This one, in my opinion, was also pretty clear-cut. I went with Montague Rames, the defensive end that played at Sumter High School for most of his high school career and then played at Manning High School in his senior season. This is a kid that has got a real nasty mean streak when he is on the football field. He is 235 pounds, you know, about 6'3", 6'4", typical size 
for an incoming true freshman at the defensive end position for college football. But in terms of what he does, this is a guy that is naturally strong in his upper body. So he's already built to really help out defenses in the run game especially. This is a guy that can deliver really violent open hand punches to offensive tackles, which can give him the space he needs to not just make sure that he's basically washed out of the play, but also make sure that he can see what all is going on. He can diagnose sort of how everything else is unfolding on the field, which is something that's very key playing defensive line. And the other thing is this, when he gets to the quarterback or a running back, he's not afraid to deliver a lick. He has multiple times in his high school career delivered hits on quarterbacks immediately after passes were thrown. There was one highlight in his, I believe, junior season where he quite literally suplexed a running back, which obviously is something that in the college game, you don't want to see that happen. Obviously, you know, with head injuries and neck injuries and how important those are, especially in today's game. You don't want a player to be doing that sort of thing. And there are certain things that he's going to have to sort of lighten up on once he gets to the SEC. But there's no question. Montague Rames, he's got that switch. The proverbial switch that everyone talks about when it comes to athletes. He's got that mentality. And he's already also got some solid strength to go with that as well. And a solid frame that you want in a weak side defensive end that can help in rush defense. So... For that reason, I think Montague Rams could be the most violent player in terms of, again, just making everyone aware of where he is at all times because of the things that he does to his opponents on the field every given Saturday. So with that being said, y'all, that is going to do it for today's show of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast. I hope that y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show as always. What are your thoughts on sort of these superlatives that I gave out to all these athletes today? Do you disagree with any of them? Do you agree with all of them? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you're watching today's show on YouTube, or you can shoot me a direct message at a line underscore SC on Twitter, and I'll try to respond to your message as quickly as I see it. And once again, I thank y'all so much for making the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast your first listen every day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball, where you'll find everything you need to know about college basketball in just one place. Plus, you'll hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. But once again, that does it for me on today's show. Have a great rest of your Thursday, and I will catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.